Chapter 3 The Action of Knowing Your Worth Placing Value in How Many Good Things We Have Performed For People That Have Been Saved Through the Ministry May Set Us Up for Failure What happens when the Lord has you in a place that doesn't look glamorous? You will begin to lose heart where He has you. The longing to be famous in your Christian walk takes over. Rather than seeking God, you desire to save your life. One of the most famed verses speaks of how God is doing something in your life. Though you cannot see it during this time, you have no clue what is going on. and You are ready to stop studying and worshiping the Lord. As the light of hope gets dimmer and dimmer, still keep listening to His word as hope will arise amid darkness. Quote, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. Our life can be faced with regret and worries as we try to live up to a standard that God has not put us. Bitterness and envy will creep in as you look at other believers and see that they are not following how you walk. In this moment of temptation, our action should not further hang out onto the law as we have set in place, but to trust in what Jesus stated. Watch and pray. Least you enter in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mark 14, verse 38. In that same breath, to realize that this belief only comes by the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. As stated in Isaiah, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. To rest in not who we are, but rather who He is, and you will see His faithfulness throughout your life. Action is faith in the Lord Jesus, as all our dependence is on Him. We are entrusting His will for our lives. Quote, According to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself. Ephesians 1, verse 9. Understanding what is taking place, not from a shifty thought, but a fact, that God is doing a work in your heart, yet you may not recognize it at the time. Standing on His promises, quote, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8, verse 28. The Lord is doing a work in you, but it can be way different than your Christian friends. Maybe for a season, a month, year, or a lifetime. The whole time keeping your eyes on Christ, for He is more valuable than trying to build a kingdom here on earth, even though you may have proclaimed it for the Lord's kingdom. Or secretly, your heart is for your own glory. If we look through the Lord's lens, via His Word, by His Spirit, then maybe that new church building project or getting a better house may not be of the Lord at this time or never. Though all our dreams may not be of God's plan, do not get discouraged because He has an eternal purpose for what we're doing here on earth. It may not be glamorous for others to proclaim how holy and awesome you are for helping world hunger or build houses for the homeless. I know numerous Christians who support people in need but it is unknown to most other people as they listen to what God has called them Here the Lord Jesus gets the glory. The action of knowing our worth is letting the Holy Spirit show us when to give. As you walk in His Spirit, He is there to draw your heart to what needs to take place. When we are consumed with doing good, with being the best example of what a Christian should look like to other Christians, you may soon or already have stopped acknowledging the Lord and have forgotten your worth that is not how better you are than others, but instead walking in love to others. The fame that you strive will turn to sand as you attempt to hide His glory while you endeavor to show your credit, which is like grass and gone. The action of turning back to worth is to see God's love for you and others as His love is different than man's. Romans states, God demonstrates His own love toward us and that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8 The significance of trusting Jesus for he took our evil upon himself on the cross, and what great treasure we receive when accepting his sacrifice alone. Quote, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23. We all deserve death, and even, quote, All of our righteousness are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Take a look how powerful this verse, in knowing what the Lord Jesus did for you. Quote, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 
Verse 5. Here is the verse again. The spaces to put your name. Quote, He was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement for peace was upon him. And by his stripes are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Recapture this verse and plug it into a definition. Quote, He was wounded for our, our transgressions, fault, trespass, sinned against God. He was bruised, crushed for our iniquities, evil, the chastisement, punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. To know your worth is not how good you are, but how good he is. As he took our transgressions, iniquities, chastisement, and the stripes we deserve upon himself, as he took his worth and brought redemption to a worthless soul. Religion is a way for man to try to come before God based on works. But we cannot come before a holy God with our sin and stand around us. Many will say, what makes believing in Jesus different than religion? Man's belief has no redemption value, but to be good enough to try to make it into God's kingdom, which is impossible to man. Jesus, we have a reason for he took the wrath we deserve as he came down and was born of a virgin to live amongst man and to pay the price of our sin. As it is written, quote, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 1, verse 18. The price of sin is death, and this death brings us to hell. Jesus gave us life to save us from ourselves. We get a choice to turn to the giver of life or to trust in ourselves. Apart from Christ, we can never be redeemed. An action is not saying, if the Lord did this for me, then I need to show him that I am worthy of being saved. I must be a better person, and the Lord will be happy with me. However, this is the opposite. Action should move us to Jesus, walking in his strength, goodness, and holiness. He is moving in our hearts day and night, and we can talk to him at any time. For, quote, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. 1 Peter 5, verses 5-6 through 6. Here is the good news. He is there for you daily. By this we are capable of, quote, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. I admit a lot of times, thinking that Jesus is ready to put in his two weeks notice for being my shepherd. Still, he cares for you and me. He wants us to give all of our disappointments, worries, hopes, and cast them to him. As the world says, grow up, this is life, but God wants you to come before Him, as the Lord is always before us, as we lay down our cares at Him. Understand that He is still ready to bring comfort to your heart. He may not bring pain out of the equation, however, He will bring His strength. Paul wrote about how many abandoned Him, left alone. Nevertheless, the Lord was there to do the impossible. Paul writes, But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me. 2 Timothy 2, verse 17. Paul did many things, though it was not by his strength. It was the Lord working in him. And the same for us, as the Holy Spirit desires to work in his greatness. Are we letting him? Or is our pride taking over to be successful in this life? Unbelievers live the same as they proclaim their greatness, saying, we did this by our hands. If you said, yes, I've been living like the world, now I guess I should be a good boy or girl so that the Lord be good to me. This is not God's way, but man's, as God desires for us to repent, to turn to him. Hear what David wrote, as the Holy Spirit was upon him, quote, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy to those who fear him. Psalms 103, verse 11. He is good to us, because he is righteous. Jesus paid the price by his blood for us to come to him, by faith, not how good we have been. Those who fear God, meaning taking reverence toward Him, knowing that His mercy is enough for us because He created all things, and by this, He can save us from our pride. However, we do not let the Holy Spirit live in us, then to fear Him would mean the opposite. As you see the Lord Himself, you will be gripped with fear because you have clung to sin. 
Those in Christ, as Isaiah is stated by the Holy Spirit, quote, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For in Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He has also become my salvation. Isaiah 12, verse 2. What great news, as our hope is not what we have done. To those who cling to the one that made you, saved you, and never leaves you, Christ Jesus paid the price as his blood was shed for you and me. And we can proclaim what David wrote in the next verse in Psalms. Quote, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Psalms 103, verses 12 through 13. Knowing our worth is to understand what Jesus has done, is doing, and going to do in you as you know him and his authority to keep our hearts in love with him as his strength gives us the ability to love others. Many Christians will go the direction of telling the Lord what great things they have done for him, but this is not of God. He states, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Hosea 6, verse 6. Jesus speaks on this verse as the Pharisees talked to his disciples about sinners coming to see him. But the Pharisees did everything that outwardly looked righteous. Today, we could be doing the same playing the religious contests, but our heart is far from Jesus. He told the Pharisees, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew 9, verses 12 through 13, that they, quote, indeed appear beautifully outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Matthew 23, verse 27. Your actions should not be, what can we do to look like we are living a productive life? Instead, be growing in the Lord as we get to see his faithfulness. To see our flawlessness is to watch a sandcastle wiped out with one water wave. For we are unstable, but he remains stable. Still, the Lord uses those who trust in him and you might be a Christian that hears the call of God in your life as an alternative not to follow the Lord's will for your life, you run to a counselor or a friend. They will tell you what you want to hear and say, I cannot see God calling you to do this. He would not call you to live a life with this type of persecution, to live a life where you have abundance of food and people that are nice to you. Let us not forget, He calls us into an impossible situation as our dependence is on him. Peter told Jesus that he does not need to go to the cross. And the Lord Jesus responded, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Mark 8, verse 33. Peter was having a mindset like the world, taking the route that seems less painful and going on the road with flowers that fade away. What if Jesus took the advice of Peter? Then none of us would have everlasting salvation. The same as God could be calling you down a road least walked on. But do not worry, he is with you. Jesus goes on speaking to Peter and disciples, quote, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Mark 8, verses 34 through 35. What a price! take up your cross. It is impossible, but this is the good news. Just as our salvation could not happen unless the Spirit moved our hearts, so it is with what is taking place here. Jesus states about who can be saved, quote, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Matthew 19 verse 26, all things are possible with God, knowing that he will give you the strength to pick up your cross and follow him as we have dependence trusting, reverence, knowing that, quote, his mercy endures forever. Second Chronicles 20, verse 17, quote, happy is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Proverbs 28, verse 14. You might be thinking, there's no way you can be a Christian. As everybody from the enemy to carnal believers looking at your life, wagging their heads in disagreement, it is not because of your sin but rather your lifestyle, as you are not involved in every church meeting or do not drive a nice car. The temptation to 
to do what your Christian friends are doing or those in your neighborhood. If we fall into this fear, then you're setting yourselves up for failure and we end up walking away from what God has you doing. Remember, the glory of man is gone like the flower of the field. Once we start living for material things, our flesh will love the invitation to bring comfort that lasts for a period and is gone. Do not fall for their lies. An example would be looking at the famous people when you were a kid, as they looked glamorous, seeing how smooth they talked and the money and fame, but today they have passed away, or they are old and scary looking, as they might have had numerous facelifts. God has called us to trust in Him, as He has the best path for us to take. Jesus encourages us with these words, quote, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because He has set His seal on Him. John 6, verse 27. Are you ready to see the faithful hand of God in your life, as He is always speaking to our hearts to trust in Him? Quote, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Isaiah 41, verse 13. Have we forgotten the words of Jesus, or have we taken upon ourselves to labor to show the world we have worth as a Christian? For Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. From our childhood, we are set in society to prove our worth, and if you're not at the top of the list of popularity, you will have no hope in this world. For being the best at a sport or school, the thought to a child that their worth is how best they will succeed against another child is groomed from youth. Christians become stuck on the same attitude, think that they must bring many people to Christ, work at a church, or give their time to something that God has not even called them. This burden to proclaim for all to see what you have done or doing will bring your heart to harden to the things of God. Moreover, perhaps all this hard work is in vain. First, go back to the knowledge that you are saved by grace, by the Spirit of God, then apply this freedom every day, walking in His Spirit. Here is a picture of trusting in Him rather than our work. As a crowd seeking Jesus found Him, they asked, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom He sent. John 6, verses 28 through 29. Here it is, to walk, trust, know the Lord Jesus as we live in his strength, seeing his faithful hand in our lives. And when we see him, we can proclaim his faithfulness rather than asserting our virtue. We know the proof throughout the scriptures as Jesus speaks upon. Do you base your life on identifying or proving your works? Or are we relying on his work on the cross? For he states, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23. These people had a lot to proclaim, but the Lord should let them into heaven. But none of these actions proved worthy to be accepted by God. The Lord Jesus stated, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. John 6, verse 29. This is our act, placing our hope in him, our creator and redeemer. Religion will say, what work are you doing to make sure you are going to heaven, yet no good deeds can save you? The apostle Paul put his trust in the finished work of Christ on the cross. For Paul knew that his results apart from Jesus is worthless. The Lord told Israel and applies to us today, quote, I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. Joel 2, verse 27. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, for God has not changed his mind or lie, but he remains faithful, steadfast in his promises to his children. Is your confidence still connected mostly to who you are? This type of belief lasts only as far as you can go. Many people will proclaim how they gave their money or memorized Bible verses, but their heart is far from God, just like those people that said, Lord, Lord, and Jesus will say, Quote, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew 7, verse 23. They pointed to their own righteousness, 
which, compared to God, has no value. We point to our Savior. We do not have to be afraid. Going through the scriptures, seeing the Lord himself speaking to our hearts, and drawing us to love those who need the Lord, will bring him glory, not to ourselves, but to Christ, the one that will save them. Let your heart be hungry to hear the Lord, as he will give you life, as stated in Joel. Quote, now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Surrender your heart, and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Joel 2, verses 12 through 13. Rather than showing the world how excellent you are, do the opposite, and point to his faithfulness and righteousness. When we acknowledge the Lord Jesus, then we can truly live by the power of the Holy Spirit, to love our neighbor, to be gentle, and forgive, having the fruit of the Spirit, which is, quote, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. Once we render our lives to God, then you will see Him protecting your heart, as the enemy, as well as our flesh, will not get us to act in the flesh, but to walk in love toward those who are wanting to us to walk in hate. Knowing that God is slow to anger, gracious and merciful, moreover, we can walk in His strength. As unbelievers or carnal believers are walking for our hurt, we will see Jesus' love for them. In the same chapter of Galatians, it is written, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, beware at least you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, verses 14 through 16. The action of knowing your worth should be cherished in your day-to-day -day living. How easily can the world bring our faults, or thoughts that you think, can get into a hopeless feeling. Nevertheless, the Lord Jesus took your hopelessness and turned it into hope, and no one can take that away. As the scripture states, quote, Who should bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. Romans 8, verse 33 through 34. Once we let go that our salvation, that our redemption comes through Jesus alone, then the enemy and our flesh will take us away from the hope we have in Christ. Let us not live an empty life with going every day as living like the world, but turn to the Lord with all your heart and watch him draw you to himself every day.